my father and what I believe is a criminal faction of the United States government, specifically the military. Yeah. At the age of four, my father told my mother he was taking me to work with him but he was actually taking me to different locations where I experienced um, well, it was a military-like place or a, it was more a clinical and a lab-like place that had um, electronic equipment where I saw men in white lab coats and mostly men in military uniform. Occasionally I'd see a woman. And I was usually strapped to a chair and they, I had something on my head and they were using drugs and I think electricity and pain uh, to hurt me, overwhelm me until I would dissociate. Some of the men in white lab coats were also pedophiles. And when we were, sometimes if I was alone with one of them, they would be sexually abusing me. And uh, they also would um, use fear and pain uh, on different parts of my body to to overwhelm me. I believe they were controlling, they wanted to control my mind and they were, when I would dissociate, they would access my subconscious and they were creating different parts within me that they were programming. And I have very clear memories of uh, acting out as one of those parts, but a part of me was aware of what was happening. And they were training me to sexually please men, to be very, very obedient and follow orders. And there were parts that were being trained to kill. And uh, I saw a lot of other children at this place. And um, then connected to that, or then the other places my father was taking me to were, uh, some were pedophile groups where I and other children were there primarily for their, for sex for them and sexual abuse. And uh, some of these places were very wealthy. And, uh, and then the other group of places I was brought to were places where uh, uh, men and women, mostly mm -hmm. men, were doing some kind of an occult practice a kind of ritual ceremony. Sometimes they included orgy-like things around them. And uh, I was brought there um, to be used in these rituals where uh, it seemed like it was part of their um, religion, I guess, to some kind, something about defiling innocence, hurting innocence, and they and having sex with the child was an incredible, powerful thing or an offering to the entity they worshipped. And so, I feel all these three different kinds of groups were connected and. As part of the ritual group, uh, they, these people did 
I saw children being killed and I saw babies being killed and they would practice a kind of blood drinking and cannibalism as part of their religion. And, um, and I believe all three of these kinds of locations, the pedophile groups, the ritual groups, and the military kind of lab place were all connected. There were times in the military mind control place, I was shown films of rituals. And I feel they were desensitizing me and preparing me in some way to be used in them. And, but they also wanted me to be robotically obedient and to do whatever I was told and, and not to have any emotional reactions. Everything had to be repressed. Well, some of the doctors, or they called themselves doctors, the men in white lab coats, some of them used German words and phrases. And there were times that I would see a pin on the lapel or even an armband or a banner on the wall with a Nazi symbol, swastika or other symbols. One doctor had a ring that uh, I was able to draw. And much later I um, found out it was a death's head ring from the SS. And um, I believe these doctors and scientists were Project Paperclip scientists and Project Paperclip was a program in the United States government that brought in after World War, World War II um, Nazi scientists from Germany and uh, and other places in Europe and uh, it. But I I also know that a lot of these. Project Paperclip scientists were also into the ritual abuse because I would see uh, rituals with Nazi symbology. And um, even in the military facility or lab-like place, clinical places, they would sometimes, I would see little occultish things done by them like um and there was and there was also photography so i suspect some of these groups were uh, creating pornography as well by photographing the rituals and um i remember one doctor took his ring that had the ring and he put it in my mouth and he put it in my genital area and took photos of it. It was like some occult thing he was doing too. So that was all connected. Uh, the children and myself uh, were told that, well, I was told that I was being watched and that if I ever spoke, they would say to me, we know where you are, we walk, we, we're, and if I ever spoke, they would find me, they would know how to find me and get me, and I would be hurt very badly or killed. And then they also said that if I did not obey um, other children, would be hurt or killed. And I saw children being hurt and I believe killed. As an example to other children, they had like, ex they considered some of the children expendable. And um, I also saw animals killed and they would say to me, it's because you didn't obey.
And um, also I would see my father in the room. In the, in the lab-like places when they were torturing. He wouldn't do anything to help me. So I knew I'm, I have no one I can turn to for help. Well, some of the, some of the doctors and the men in white lab clothes were very brutal and cold, cold hearted. And uh, there was a cage with a child in it, a boy, young boy. And I believe he was stabbed and then uh, dragged out of the cage and he was hung by the neck. And uh, I saw this and they, I believe they continued to stab him. And then they told me I was given a knife and I was told, <laughs> oh, I have to help kill the boy. And I refused. And they said to me, if you do not obey, we will continue to kill children in this way until you do. So I felt I had to help or else other children would die. Well, my experience has been that love is stronger than their fear and manipulation and their brutality. And I, I had to learn how to love myself and I'm still learning, but the more I learn to accept myself, appreciate myself, support myself and validate myself, which I believe are aspects of love, that, that energy has strengthened me and it has allowed me to face my fear and overcome them one step at a time. So I believe ultimately love is the most powerful energy. <laughs>